So in a nutshell, what we talked about last time was this formula, right? You can also write this as g m1 m2 upon r square, or you can also write this as g capital M small m upon r square, right? Uh, so Newton's law of gravitation says that the force is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation, right? So either you say the separation or you should further specify that the distance is between their centers because uh, this uh, law holds true only for point masses and there's one thing here that I wanted to uh, shed more light on so this is only for point masses and we knew the idea of point masses is that you assume that all the mass is concentrated at one point in the body and for uniform objects we say that that point is their center so when can we actually use this assumption for point masses because sometimes the examiner asks you well when can you use this uh, this uh, Newton's law of gravitation or for example when the real force is not equal to the force which is calculated by this so in that case you need to know what do you really mean by uh, saying that something is a point mass or something can be taken to be a point mass so we take this point mass assumption when the size of the mass right when the size or the shape of that mass is negligible compared to the distance between the masses right so last time out that example that we were talking about where we had 75 kg uh, men or women and they're standing one meter apart so in that example since the height of for example uh, a human is like 1.7 or 1.8 meters that might not have been the best uh, the best application of this formula but when we really talk about this uh, the application of this as per our syllabus we take distances between for example the sun and the earth or the sun and the moon or a sun and a satellite and earth and a satellite in all of these cases what happens is that the shapes of that masses the sizes of those masses are not very much compared to the distance between their masses that's when you can use the point mass assumption so now we'll be looking at some of these uh, some of the examples related to this so that you get a feel of how to use this formula so let's have a look at this question so the moon orbits the earth along a path of radius 3.84 into 10 to the 8 meter right so that's this radius of uh, the orbit of the moon around the earth and you have the mass of the moon you have the mass of the earth and gravitational constant is also given part a says the gravitational force of attraction between the earth and the moon is what keeps the moon in orbit this is something we already know this is what provides the centripetal force for circular motion and we'll be looking at this in a lot of detail in the upcoming few lectures as well. Calculate the size of this force. So simply we need to use this formula for the gravitational force is G M M upon R square, right? So G is 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11, the mass of uh, so we need to calculate the gravitational force between the earth and the moon obviously we are multiplying two quantities order does not make a difference so this is the mass of the moon and this is the mass of the earth 6.00 into 10 to the 24 right divided by the square of the separation between them so the radius is 3.84 into 10 to the 8 right so that would be the separation between them and right now we can also point to why are we using this formula does the uh, approximation of both of these very large objects as point masses does this make sense so if you remember the last video the radius of the earth is in the order of 10 to the 6 the moon is somewhat smaller so this radius would be even less so 10 to the 8 as uh, compared with 10 to the 6 so this is 100 times as large so we can say 
that yes, uh, the separation is actually much larger than the size of these objects. So we can take this to be a point mass. So using this, if we calculate the gravitational force of attraction, this turns out to be 1.99 into 10 to the 20 Newton, correct to 3SF. Now the this next part is what I'm more interested in, which is a rocket of mass 42,000 kg is fired from the Earth to the Moon. Right, so this is launched from the Earth and it's heading towards the Moon. What is the net gravitational force on the rocket when it is 3 into 10 to the 8 meters from the center of the Earth? Now, a very important word that you have to note here is this net gravitational force. And this basically points to the idea that we've talked about a lot, which is that all masses attract each other. So this rocket would be attracted by the Moon, uh, by the Earth, and also by the moon and you also have these arrows being shown on the diagram so this is being attracted by the earth hence fe and this is being attracted by the moon hence fm so force by the moon force by the earth but both of these are in opposite directions this is the mass and you have the distance from the center of the earth so you have this distance of the uh, rocket but you also know this total distance and for the calculation of this force fm you would need the uh, distance between the rocket and the moon. So if this is the total distance and if you know this distance, then you can simply subtract to find the rest of this distance. So that's what we'll be doing now. So first, let's calculate either of the forces. For example, let's calculate Fe first. Right, so Fe would be again G M M upon R square. So G is the same 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11. Now the mass of the earth was given as 6 into 10 to the 24. Right and the mass of the uh, rocket is 42,000 and the distance between them is 3 into 10 to the power of 8. So you will square this and using this you can calculate the value of the force exerted by the earth on this rocket right so that turns out to be 187 Newton now obviously you can also see that this is now not equal to the weight that we would calculate for this mass because now the distance it's not on the surface of the earth anymore it's much farther it's, it's much further apart so this force which is exerted by the earth is also smaller so now that we've calculated Fe, we can now calculate Fm, the force exerted by the moon. Again, the same formula, I'm not writing that down every time. So 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11. Now this capital M would be the mass of the moon, which is 7.35 into 10 to the 22. And again, since we're talking about the force on the rock is, I think, what it was. Yeah, so that is 42,000, still the same, but the distance now is going to be this distance from here to here. So if all of this is 3.84 into 10 to the 8, and this is 3 into 10 to the 8, so I can just subtract these to figure out this distance. So 3.84 into 10 to the 8 minus 3 into 10 to the 8 would be 0.84 into 10 to the 8. So this is, let me just write this down if it's becoming a bit hard to follow. So this minus this is going to be the distance between the rock and the moon. So using this you can calculate the force exerted by the moon on the satellite which is 29.2 Newton. Now out of both of these forces which force is greater? So the force exerted uh, by the earth is to the left, the force exerted by the moon is towards the right, the force exerted by the earth is greater than the force exerted by the moon, so there will be a net force of 187 minus 29.2 which is 158 and since the force exerted by the earth was greater, so this force is going to be directed towards the earth right now from here on it's not very difficult to see that as the 
rocket goes away from the earth and towards the moon this force would keep de uh, decreasing and this force exerted by the moon would keep increasing because this distance between them is decreasing so the force would increase and the distance here is going to increase so the force would decrease so there would also be a point where both of these forces would be equal right and what would happen then so this idea we'll be talking about in, in a lot more detail but in the context of gravitational fields this is going to be the topic for the next lecture so see you there